Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the workshop Selecting Your Program and Staying on Track, Aligning Academics and Study Abroad. My name is Mandy Neidecker. I'm the Assistant Director of Faculty Directed um, Programs in the Study Abroad Office, and I am joined by my colleague Shira, who I will um, ask to introduce herself as well. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Shira Burns and I am the Assistant Director in the Study Abroad Office working with our Partnership and Exchange Program. So we are really excited that you're here today. We wanted to take some time to talk through how to um, learn more about earning credit on programs, how to find classes that you might take abroad, and then also how to engage with academic advising and learn about course equivalencies, and of course, leave time at the end for questions. So if you do have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to pop them in the chat, um, or there will be plenty of time to answer questions at the end of the presentation. So first, we want to talk about choosing a program. How on earth do you choose? Um, our office offers over 300 different programs in more than 65 different countries. We have in-person experiences. We have virtual programs now that are done completely online. And we offer programs in length from one week to one year. Um, so there are so many options that our office offers and we want to help you to be able to think through um, how do you choose? So we have a resource on our website and the link is here in the slides, which we will share with you after this presentation. But it's a choosing a program guide and it walks through questions about all of these things listed, academics, location, timing, housing, to try to help you think through what you want to see in a program. Um, I always use the example and I'm not sure it's effective, but if you are a sports fan, I love NFL football. And there are some games that I care a lot about. Anytime the Colts are playing, Colts are my team. Um, anytime they're playing the Patriots, ugh, Tampa Bay, not anymore, right? Silly Tom Brady. Anyway, but there are some games that I'm not sure who I'm rooting for. You know, it's uh, Green Bay versus Minnesota, and I'm not sure I care until a big play happens. And I realize I'm either cheering against or for one of the teams and think, oh, turns out I'm rooting for blah, blah, blah. Um, so in that respect, I think that this choosing a program worksheet is actually works in some of the same ways. You might not know where to start. You may not know what kind of global education program makes sense for you, but then you start to read about housing and you think, yes, I absolutely want to stay in a homestay. I want to interact with a family and live with a family um, for the duration of my program. And then that helps to guide you. Suddenly, you know something about what you want your global education experience to be, and you can start looking for programs that offer a homestay option. Um, so I think it's just a really helpful tool to start to get you thinking about various aspects of, of, of global education programming um, and to think about which parts are the most important to you so that that can start to guide your search and, and search for a program. We also offer major guides. We have over 100 guides published on our website. And we invite you, if one of your, if your major is one of the guides that we have published, to take a look at that guide because that is going to lead you to best fit programs within your major. We work with academic advising teams. We work with unit and school leadership um, to make sure that we are suggesting programs that help keep you on track for graduation and help you earn major and minor and elective credit in your particular field. And so what you will see as you go through these major guides is that we offer guidance on when it's best to study abroad. There are some units where, you know, maybe you need to be at ASU taking your um, first and second year classes, but then you have a lot of flexibility in your sophomore or your, your junior and your senior year. In other units, it's really important to be at ASU for your junior and senior level classes and capstones, but you might have more flexibility to do a study abroad program in your earlier years of college. 
Um, there are some programs that are really locked up and you might not be able to take major credit abroad um, or on a program, but you could really focus on your general electives. And so the major guide will help you to know when it's best, when it's optimal for you to, to study abroad or to participate in a global education program. There's another section of the major guide that provides questions for you to ask both your advisor and the study abroad office um, so that you are armed with a list of questions, even if you are not sure about what study abroad looks like and how that might work. Um, these are questions to help guide your discussion to make sure that you are kind of thinking through all of the various aspects of study abroad. There's also information on funding specific to the major. Um, so if you are, you know, a um, if you are a major in um, the in engineering, we have the SEMTI guides up. There would be information on engineering scholarships for study abroad. And last, there is actually a list of programs, generally between five and 15 programs, um, that are suggested to keep you on track for graduation in that major. Now, I said just a minute ago that we have over 300 programs in our office. So these, this list of programs is certainly not the end all be all. They're not the required programs that you must go on when, you, when you're thinking about a global education opportunity, but it's a place to start. It's a place to, to look to see what classes are being offered and how they might keep you on track and then to explore from there. So we hope that rather than being overwhelmed with 300 plus programs, that we can give you something that's a little more digestible and that you can start exploring from there. Now we recognize that some of you in this room may be um, majoring in something that we don't have a major guide for yet. We are working on them. We are working on getting more of those published. But in the meantime, if you have questions, you can absolutely reach out to myself or Shira, also to your academic advisor, and we can all work in tandem to find out what kind of program is best for you. So now I want to talk a little bit about earning credit on programs. First thing you want to know is that all of the programs in the study abroad office are credit bearing, meaning that no matter what program you take, you will earn credit that will apply to the number of credits that you need to graduate from ASU. You are able to take major, minor, certificate, and elective courses while you're abroad, depending on your program, and we will, we will do our best to help you find those courses. Shira is going to talk a little bit later about how to make sure that those courses get approved um, as ASU credit, and so we'll discuss that. We also want you to know that on any of our programs, you're going to remain in full-time student status. Um, that means that the credits that you're taking count toward the number of credits that you need for your scholarship. So if you need 30 scholarship credit, 30 credits in order to maintain your scholarship per semester and you decide to do a semester program, you can take 12 credits and then come back and take 16 or 18 rather. Um, or you can take 15 credits, but those credits count towards maintaining your scholarship. You can also maintain honor status while you're abroad or on a program. And we want to emphasize that you will earn graded ASU credit. This all counts towards your GPA. So it's really important that in addition to exploring the new culture, the new city, the new, um, the new location and all of the people and adventures and things that you're also keeping up on your academic schoolwork because it does count towards your GPA and they are credits that you're earning towards graduation. Now, as far as academics go, um, for faculty directed programs, if you're interested in, in participating on one of these that take place either in the summer or what we call a global intensive experience program, you'll note that all of the classes are taught for ASU credit. An ASU faculty member is taking a group of ASU students somewhere in the world teaching ASU classes that come right back to your transcript as ASU credit. And what you'll see in the image here is that the courses and faculty tab, so that third tab there that's highlighted, outlines the courses offered and the number of credits required for the course or the program. So what you'll see in this example is that students will take two courses for a total of six credits, and here are the courses listed below in which they could enroll. Um, the GPA and prerequisites are listed on the program overview tab, so that first main tab there, and that will tell you if you need a 2.0 GPA or if you need to have, um, you know, comp 100 or 101 under your belt or whatever it is. 
And if you have any questions about the courses, the great thing is that the faculty director of the program is the professor of the course. And so you can reach out with any questions that you have to the faculty director of the program and they will be able to answer them. And now I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague. Thanks, Mandy. I, uh, I had a little technical difficulty making myself unmuted, <laughs> but here we are. So um, Mandy was just telling you a little bit about the faculty directed programs and how they work. Um, and on partnership and exchange programs, there are some similarities. And the big one is that they are still credit bearing. You'll still earn ASU credit for it. Um, but these are not actually facilitated or taught by an ASU faculty. So in this model, um, you would take a host university course or a study center course um, in order to enroll in your classes. And depending on when you go, partnership and exchange programs are offered in various different terms, the summer and the semester, all the way up to a full academic year. Um, but you do have to do a little bit more groundwork in order to figure out how the courses you take on your program will articulate back to ASU. And the good news is that you can do this before you go, and we want you to do this before you go. This can be a really important factor in how you choose a program. So um, in order to start this process, what we recommend is that you go to the program brochure page. And we keep we often use that term, but what we mean by program brochure page, if you're on our website and you're browsing through the different options and you click on a program, that is the program brochure page. Um, so if you go to the pre-approved course list on the course info page, you'll be able to see all of the courses offered by the program um, and how they come back to ASU. Something to keep in mind is that it's not necessarily a list of courses that will be offered in the term that you go. So we do want you also to look at the program website to see which courses will be offered. Um, if it's a summer term, sometimes they're different. Sometimes every fall semester they offer the same list, but that's not the same as the spring. So that's why we really want you to check on that program website first. So when you click on that pre-approved list, you're going to see all of the courses that have been approved by ASU over, we'll say, the last five years. So um, as you're going through it, you can click on any of the hyperlinks to the left of each course title, and it will expand the actual equivalency. So this example here, Advanced Spanish for Health Professionals, um, this course actually receives multiple equivalencies because it's you can see it's a five ASU credit course. So students receive um, a three credit Spanish 318 course. And in addition to that, they receive two credits of Spanish 300 level department electives. So when you're looking at the equivalency, anytime you see a 3DE or a 4DE or a 1DE or a 2DE, the DE stands for department elective and the number stands for the level of the course. So 300 level department elective. You can also see in this screenshot, you can't see it, but um, to the column to the right, there is another designation for if the course carries general studies. So if you need, um, SB credit, you can see which courses carry the SB credit or any other general studies requirement. Okay, so finding the courses offered. So I was mentioning earlier that we really want you to be looking at the program website in order to determine which courses are offered in any given term. So you want to view um, at the bottom of this screenshot, you see it says view ISA's website. So this is an ISA a partnership program. And so you want to go ahead and click on that button in order to get a listing of which courses are offered in a particular term. Um, and on their program website, you can also get access to things like syllabi and course descriptions, the number of credits, and any prerequisite information that you need to have. So a lot of those details and the specific term offerings, just like at ASU, how things change from the fall to the spring to the summer, um, the program website is how you'll see what's actually offered. 
Um, and then of course, after you look at this, you'll also wanna go back again and check that pre-approved course list to see how the courses offered on the program will come back to your ASU record after you complete them. Course equivalency request. So this comes up because what happens when you see a course say on ISA's website or on an exchange partner's website that you're really excited about, but it doesn't actually appear on the pre-approved list. And this happens somewhat frequently because in a lot of cases, especially with exchange programs, you will have access to an entire course catalog for another institution. So the likelihood that we have evaluated everything is pretty slim. So um, here is the course equivalency request form, and you can get to this from the very top of the pre-approved course list. Thank you, Mandy. Um, and can we, thank you. Um, it is on this, uh, when you click that link, it'll take you to this form. It's super quick. It takes maybe a minute. And really all you need to provide is which country the program is in that will populate a list of programs. And then you'll just fill in the course details. So definitely the course title, you need that. If it has a prefix and number, include that. Sorry, ignoring that phone call. Um, and the other information that's on there is like the term that you plan to take it. And if there's any specific requests you have for that equivalency. For example, if you were a student submitting that Spanish course that we just looked at and you really wanted that Spanish 318 credit, then that would be a place that you could put in like, hey, I think this course is pretty similar to Spanish 318. There's no guarantee it'll come back that way, but it certainly couldn't hurt to ask. And then lastly, you'll upload a copy of the syllabus that you, that you were able to get from either the program provider website or the host university website. One thing we do want you to keep in mind is that requests can take some time, um, especially if it is a catalog course like a Spanish 318 it's going to go to the faculty within that department and faculty don't always work 12 months a year. And sometimes they're just not as available. So they can take up to three months, um, especially when submitting courses, not during the actual school year. So just be mindful of that and do things in advance. Okay, so the academic advising form any student who's participating on either a partnership or an exchange program needs to complete this form as part of your program application. And the way it works, we want you to complete the front side. And on the front side, it has a lot of kind of general information on the academic side that we want you to be familiar with. Um, it also is intended to maybe ask some questions that or pose some questions that you could then bring to an academic advisor. Um, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So these are just some good questions to ask. Um, make an appointment with your advisor early because they will need to complete the backside. And um, especially if you are part of a degree program where there's a lot of students applying to study abroad programs, if you wait until the last minute, you probably are not going to be able to get in in time and you might miss an application deadline because of it. Um, and we do not wanna move you forward with the program before you know how that program will impact your degree progress. So this is a really important step and planning ahead is so important. Um, and also we wanna make sure that you have a plan B in case your first choices aren't available. So sometimes a plan B means um, that you need alternate courses. So maybe um, the program that you're going on, that course that you really want, it might fill to capacity or it might get canceled due to low enrollment. So have some other options ready to go. And also, if you are planning on studying abroad, say in spring 2022, but um, you're planning for it now, there might be some classes at ASU that you need to take in the fall so that you don't fall behind when you do go abroad. So a lot of this is just planning, making sure that you have um, all your ducks in a row so that there's no surprises and you know exactly how your program is going to fit into your degree. All right. So we have shared a lot of information and we have been talking at you. 
um, quite a bit. It looks like there are perhaps three or four students here. So if anyone has questions, our group is small enough, you are welcome to unmute yourself. Um, or you can type them into the chat box as well and we'll hang out for a few minutes and answer any questions that you might have. Yes, we will um, share the recording with you all after we are done today. Yes, promise you will all get it. No questions. Oh my goodness, Mandy. This might be a first, but I'll take that as a good sign that we were very thorough. 